Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Uh, this is our inaugural Carers Information Session. Uh, my name's Alan Zubernick and it's my pleasure to be the MC for today. So if you've got any questions or queries, by all means, fire them at me. Um, for the first thing I'd, for the, uh, this afternoon, I'd like to introduce Lindsay Thomas. Lindsay Thomas is from the Nukunu First Nations people and he's here to conduct a welcome to country. Wamath, Wanipata, Nai, Jupri, Pate, Nenamana, Nukunu, Tharu. On behalf of the Nukunu people, we share with you the story of this country. The Nukunu have an ancient association with the Upper Spencer Gold and a place today called Port Piri, Tharu. Our ancestors created this place and provided all we needed to live healthy happy and strong. The land and the waters and the stories of their creation are the basis of our spiritual beliefs and culture. Port Piri has always been an important ceremonial place for Aboriginal people and we acknowledge the many Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people that today call Port Piri their home. And on behalf of the Nukunu people, I welcome you to country and hope that you respect and protect this country and walk in harmony with us. I would like to thank the organiser for inviting me to speak today and from the Nukunu people, I wish you much success for today and any future planned events. I thank you all for your time. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Helen Brown from Carers SA, uh, Yvonne Cloak for Building Local Care Workforce, Kim Gregory from the Uni Hub Spencer Golf, Leanne Bennett from Bat Care, and my deputy, Alan Zubinick from the RDA York and Mid North. Now, I just want to pay tribute to Alan a little bit. Um, Alan, you could not wish for a better deputy as mayor. Alan is a dot, a dot joiner. So, we have a little issue that we need to connect a dot. That's our man to go to. He's absolutely fantastic in looking after this community. So. Um, I have an apology from Director of Corporate and Community, uh, Lynn Walden, who has a medical appointment today, and she's very sorry that she cannot be part of it. But in uh, 2020, 2020, Council adopted a Disability Access and Inclusion Plan. And this is a really interesting thing, because it's not really the, the role of Councils, as some of the members seen. But Alan was driving forward all the time, saying that we really need to be involved with this. And through the good work of Alan and our, our staff, we decided that we really needed to put some serious effort into it. So it become part of Council's focus. That awoken us to some of the things that we're looking at in our community that aren't seen by most. Some of the people that are working behind and finding it hard. Um, I'm going to share with you a story with uh, Jerry Shivel up the front here. Um, Jerry Shevel is a long-time friend and ex-councillor of Port Perry Regional Council and uh, I was at a hack meeting with our Port Perry Hospital and Jerry said to me, it's about time somebody did something about the carers. We need some help to negotiate through the systems and all that sort of stuff that are there. And I took that on board and, and I thought to myself, well, how do we do that? If we don't champion for somebody that's come forward to ask the question, why? So I spoke to Alan and, and Alan got me a couple of um, meetings and we started to talk um, out loud with Jerry and realising that uh, as community leaders, it's not just about roads, rates, rubbish bins, it's about the community. So what we intended to do is to use the plan, our disability action plan, um, to make a lot more things different in our community by actually having access to buildings um, improving that, in fact we've just recently got a grant, it would be about $2 million that would be spent around the area trying to improve that. Now $2 million sounds like a lot, but I've got to tell you it's a drop in the ocean for as far as what we need to do. But we are committed it, to doing it. We recognise that better access and inclusion for the, for the benefit of our residents is not for just some, it's for all of our residents. We understand that going for a simple swim in the, in the swimming pool, for somebody that is caring for someone to have some respite, that's all about what we should be looking to switch on to. 
Our plan is to take some small steps, like $2 million is a small step for us, but we will continue to commit to making those, plan, those steps and building an understanding of the challenges that face us going forward that we have to continue to, to look for. Talking to all of you great people today, and I do thank you so much for all turning up on a, on a pretty cold day. Probably a good thing it's today, not yesterday, because it was a little bit too cold. Um, we will learn what your needs are and what we can provide as far as the services in Port Pirie. Alan and I and the council uh, and staff recognise that um, going forward, if we communicate better with you, we will have a place that's better for you to live and uh, enjoy. So this forum today, I'm sure, will open your minds to some of the needs that you need and, and definitely will open ours and we'll be taking some notes as we, we sit in the background. But I hope you get a lot for it from it today. And uh, remember, like the Pulpia Regional Council is always there to listen. Um, it's not a matter of um, us actually getting mistaken and get a bit of council bashing, but I think at the end of the day is if we're approached like you, we'll actually try and do everything possible within our powers to make things happen to you and then advocate for you up to the next level of government and even further if we need to. So uh, thank you for coming, enjoy your day and uh, so looking forward to meeting some of you as we get around. Carers in Australia save the Australian government community over $80 billion due to the critical work that they do. Today we would like to enable, empower and educate carers in our community to have a better quality of life. This may be through access to employment, education, training or services available to them. And as the, the Mayor so rightly said earlier on, the reason we're meeting here today is because of, because of a conversation with Jerry at the front here, um, who was basically saying, well, you know, where do I go? Well, what, do I, what do I do? Uh, there's a saying that goes around that you don't know what you don't know. And I think that's very, very apt because of the fact that, um, you know, community miss out on essential services and programs and they don't know what is available. Not everyone is on social media. Uh, not everyone has the capacity or the ability or the access to jump on a laptop and find out what is available. And that's, that's a fact. It is a, because of this that organisations like Carers SA with Helen's mob, Building Local Care Workforce, which is Yvonne's crew, Regional Development Australia, York and Mid-North, the Porpery Regional Council, Leanne from Batcare, and many other interested parties are here today. According to the Australian Government Bureau of Statistics, and I mentioned this on TV the other night, that the rate of Porpery residents who require daily care is 69% above the national average. Why? Um, in my own view, it's because those same people love Piri and they want to reside in our beautiful, humble town. We are an inexpensive place to live and provide some excellent services whilst just over two hours from Adelaide. So why would you not want to live here? There are over 1,200 people in our region that receive a carer's payment or allowance, which basically quantifies the number of, of people that are caring in our community at the moment. And it quantifies that need for the caring role. I'll run through briefly some of the Centrelink options that are available later on and advise what payments and services are available. But certainly, I guess the whole thing is today is about starting that conversation. I think that's really, really critical. Uh, now, I'll run through later on because we're going to have some speakers with regards to talking about the, the caring experience, and we'll run through that later on. Uh, but for now, I would like to introduce you to Helen Brown, who is the Executive Manager for Strategic Engagement for Carers SA. You will love her, as she is not only smart and caring, but she's from Piri. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and before I kick off I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional um, owners of the land we meet on today, the Nukanoo people, and pay my respects to their elders past and present and any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people who may be here today. So thank you very much for that kind and welcoming intro. Um, it's always a pleasure to be able to, and a privilege to be able to return to Port Pirie, not only to visit my family who are still here, but um, to come here for work, which I've always been fortunate to do in my career to date. Um, so thank you for having me. As Alan mentioned, um, today is a really significant event, and even more so because the idea of how this 
uh, event has come to fruition is because it was born out of the idea and voice of a carer, Jerry Shibble, mentioning that there was more of a need to be having this conversation about carers in the community, not only in Port Pirie but surrounds. And there certainly is a lot more conversation to be had and discussion, not only from um, carers in the community but also government, non-government organisation and other peak bodies to be able to ensure that we continue to improve on the services, supports and information that are available for carers. Carers. And I'm here to talk on behalf of Carers SA. We have been around for over 30 years, but our role in supporting carers has changed. So it's timely that this event uh, has, has come about today. So today we thought it would be good for this session, this for me to kick off, to talk about firstly who we consider as a carer and also to talk about what our role at Carers SA is in supporting carers, which is available here for carers in the community. To talk through the Carer Gateway, which has only been around for just over a year, and it is the new federal government's um, service for carers around the country. And also to talk through how carers um, and organisations can access the services that we offer. So firstly, anyone, anytime can become a carer. In fact, almost 2.65 million Australians are carers right now, which equates to about one in eight people. Carers make up nearly 11% of the Australian population and over 235,000 carers are under the age of 25 across the country, which is significant. And young carers can range from primary school age kids right up to early adulthood. Unpaid carers, so carers who are unpaid, um, is, is, what we, is what Carers SA consider our, our clients and the people we support provide an estimated 1.9 billion hours of care every year, which saves the Australian government $77.9 billion annually, which Alan also referred to. That is significant. So carers, the unpaid carer community in Australia, essentially are the foundation supporting and, and contributing such a significant role in their caring support to the person or people they're caring for. So you can imagine if carers weren't there providing this layer of support, what that would mean for the, the government, for health, for mental health supports, um, for the economy. So without carers providing that significant amount of support, what would happen to the people they're caring for and also to, to the government and health systems? In South Australia, we know of 245,000 unpaid carers. But we know that there are more than that and there are a lot of people who don't identify as a carer and there may be people here today in the audience who don't identify as a carer but may after today uh, and they might, may not identify as a carer because the term carer doesn't, doesn't match their role of what they're doing every day or it may be because of cultural reasons. A lot of cultures we know are taking on a caring role because it's what we do. So if grandmother had a stroke or a niece or nephew had a disability or other people needed support, of course those people would, would, I would care and support them, but I wouldn't see myself necessarily as a carer. So a carer can mean lots of things to different people and that may be why sometimes people don't identify as a carer and therefore don't seek support. But of those that do recognise and identify themselves as a carer, in our state we know there's about 245,000, which includes just over 30,000 young carers aged between 7 and 25 years of age. So who is a carer? So you are a carer if you provide unpaid care to a family member or friend who may have a disability, a mental illness, dementia, which could be early onset as well as in older age, you could be caring for someone with a long-term health condition, an illness that may be terminal, someone who may have an alcohol or drug-related problem, or someone who is frail due to age. So it's so broad. You may be providing full-time care for someone, you may be providing part-time care. You may be living with the person you're caring for, you may not be. You may be caring for um, a, a neighbour, it could be uh, someone who is, um, you may have more than one carer in the one household caring for one person. You may be caring for more than one person. You may be caring for people of all different ages. Um, so it is quite broad. And after these presentations, we often have people in the crowd say, well, actually, I'm a carer. That fits, my, that fits who I am. Or I actually know other people in my family or friends who actually would, I, would be a carer, but they may not be aware of that. So it is, it is quite broad. And 
If you are a carer who has, is looking after someone or supporting someone who, who may have one of these conditions, it needs to be six months or more. So if my partner was to break his leg tomorrow, I wouldn't be deemed eligible for services. But if someone who has one of these conditions or illnesses, which would be more prolonged six months or more, then that's who we deem would be eligible for our services and supports. The only one that wouldn't be is someone who may be in palliative care. Because as we know, someone who is in palliative care may be in palliative care for quite a short time or a longer period of time. Some common questions we get asked around eligibility for our services. Can I access Carers SA and the Carer Gateway if I'm accessing NDIS? Yes, you can. Whether people are connected with NDIS or um, in fact My Age Care, you can connect with us at Carers SA. So you're eligible. As long as you're caring for um, some of the, the, the caring for someone who has one of the um, conditions I mentioned in the previous slide. So we're there to complement. Can I receive the Centrelink um, carer payments as well as access services through Carers SA? Yes, you can. In fact, a lot of the carers we connect and support with may not have a carer allowance or a Centrelink um, payment. You are very welcome and eligible to connect with us if you do or you do not. It is not income or means tested. Do I need to live with a person or people I care for to be eligible? No, you don't. You may live with a person, you may not. In fact, a lot of people who we um, have connected with quite recently and have run some of these sessions with are people who may be caring for elderly parents. So you may not live with mum or dad, but your parents may be ageing. You may be working, you may not be, but you're the go-to if something happens for mum or dad or both of them who may be frail. You need to drop things to take them to medical appointments, check on them daily, be the person who's navigating my age care or, or whatever it might be with Centrelink. So you are considered a carer also. And a lot of people in that cohort don't necessarily um, realise they are, as well as those who are providing care 24 seven. So who is Carers SA? So we have been around for over 30 years. Um, we're a non-government um, organisation and we've been providing support services and information to the carer community for, uh, for over 30 years. In April last year, our role changed and it grew. We became a statewide organisation as of April last year. And we now are the key lead agency for supporting carers in South Australia. And we are now the local carer gateway provider on behalf of Australian government. So we have staff spread throughout all states and territories, um, sorry, throughout, throughout the state. And there are also um, other carer gateway providers who are the lead agencies in other states and territories. So in this, in this state, in our state, Carers SA is the lead agency. The Carer Gateway is a large part of what we do at Carers SA, which we took on in April last year as a new role, but we're also a key advocate for carers. So as the Mayor was saying earlier, the Port Perry Regional Council are a key advocate. We are also in relation to carers. So we, we listen and hear and want to keep hearing what the carer voice is telling us collectively and individually, like how this event has been born out of those conversations around we need to be doing more for carers in this community. We are also considered a statewide um, organisation where we want to keep hearing your views, raising them with government, raising them with peak bodies to ensure that carers are getting the help and support that they need and deserve. So what is the Carer Gateway? So the Carer Gateway, as I mentioned, was launched nationally in April last year. There are services available through the Gateway which can be delivered online, in person and via the phone. So we know that online isn't everyone's cup of tea, but there's more and more online technology and connection and services, particularly in this day and age and as we've, we've seen over the last year with COVID. But there's always a place and an important um, role of having face-to-face -face services and connection. It doesn't matter where you live in Australia, if you are a carer, you have access to the Carer Gateway, um, So, which is, which is why it is a federal Australian government um, service. In, in SA, as I mentioned, we are the gateway provider for South Australia. So some of the gateway services that are offered, um, to, to kickstart the process, carers would contact us or you could be referred by an organisation to connect with us. And we will have a conversation with you over the phone um, at a time that suits you to understand and learn more about your caring role. What's working well? Where do you need some extra supports? 
And from that conversation, that then helps us to better understand where we can put some supports in place with agreement with you as the carer. So after that conversation, carers may have access to this particular service, which is what we call carer-directed support services. But in a nutshell, it is where a carer may have access to a carer-directed package. And packages consist of a range of things, individualised to the carer need. And that could be one-off practical support to help the carer in their caring role. It could be an item that we purchase on your behalf that will help you in your caring role. It could be things like um, white goods um, where that you might not have the means to purchase or replace uh, white goods that are breaking down in the home. Um, it could be a laptop which helps you to stay connected potentially with your work and volunteering or social connection. It could be a whole range of things. It could be um, a physical health equipment item. So you may not, for example, be able to have that walk every hour that you may have done every day, but because of the person you're caring for now at home, you can't have that break, which was your one hour a day or one hour every other couple of days for you to connect and just have time out. But to have maybe a physical equipment at home, to have, whether it could be the weights or treadmill, whatever it may be, that could be something that we could offer. Again, it's very dependent on your needs as an individual. And these are just some examples I'm giving. It would come back to what that means for you as the individual in that conversation. Another package we could offer if the carer, uh, carer's situation would, would benefit from a longer series of planned supports, this is where planned respite could be offered. It could be in-home, out-of-home respite. It could be things like gardening support. It could be cleaning in the house. It could be assistance with transport. It's very varied. Um, for, we've, we've even been able to provide support for young carers to get their driver's licence, for instance, which we know can be a cost. It's about taking that pressure off and providing some of that support where a carer might say that's a, that, that really takes the pressure off and is a real support for me at this point in time. So it could be a series of supports, again, depending on the needs of the carer. Another service we may be able to offer is counselling. So counselling can be offered one-on-one -on -one with a carer, a professional counsellor, and the counselling is available for carers who may be experience, experiencing some um, challenges with their own mental health. We know, and the Carer Voice tells us through the research and data and surveys that have been done, that often the mental health and the wellbeing of carers is often of decline because of their caring role, because of their caring situation. So it's so important that where carers are supported, which is what the Carer Gateway aims to do, the more supported, the more resilient, the more connected a carer is, particularly when they need us most, then that has a flow on effect to the people they care for. Carers, as they can offer up to six counselling sessions for carers, um, and sessions are available across South Australia, as are all of our services. Another service we can offer and support is peer support. So where carers can come together in their local community, they can connect with other carers. It's a social connection opportunity, but it's also about covering off on, at each session, a series of topics that aim to come back to who you are as a carer. Often as a carer, you may lose sight of what was once important to you or your connections, whether it be with other family members, hobbies, interests, passions, friendships in the community. And the things we cover off on these, uh, these discussions in these peer groups is about how can you can reconnect about what is important to you as a person. So take the carer hat off, which is often hard to do, but come back to you. What is it about you, about reconnecting back to what is important to you, as well as being a carer? And then we start to have conversations about what that could look like, um, as well as connecting with other carers. We also run these peer groups um, online as well, via Zoom, for those that are able to do that and, and, and like to do that. Coaching is another service carers may be eligible for where carers can work one-on-one -on -one with a person who supports them in a coaching role. The carer identifies for them a goal that's important for them that they'd like to bring about change in their life. And the, the person, the carer's SA person, would work alongside the carer to support them, not do on behalf of, but help the carer to navigate, to, to create change in their life, or to work through that goal that the carer's identified as this would really help me in my life with a little bit of support. And there are up to six coaching sessions that can be offered to carers with that service. Emergency respite is a key service we can offer to carers. 
Emergency respite is where a carer may have access to respite at short notice. So this is when there's an emergency or unplanned event that occurs. It's not only when people often think that this is only available for when instances where a carer may end up in hospital in an emergency situation. That could be one example. But it could also be where the, the situation at home becomes unsafe for whatever reason. It may be that um, the, the person you're caring for situation from time to time, it would benefit from having some space um, so it could be a whole range of reasons that are unplanned or, emer or an emergency situation um, where we may be able to provide that emergency respite support in or out of home, depending on the person's situation and availability of respite care. We also do run the Carer Gateway service in partnership with other organisations you may be aware of or have heard of or even access support from. So that's Life Without Barriers, it is Skylight Mental Health, Dementia Australia and NPY Women's Council, as well as a whole range of culturally and linguistically diverse community um, groups across South Australia who are helping us to connect with um, carers who come from different cultural backgrounds. The Carer Gateway services, in addition to what I've described, that Carers SA and our partners are able to deliver and connect with carers on, there's also a website. Um, the Carer Gateway website for those carers who want to access information and supports in their own time, in their own leisure and do it via this if you have the, the connections to do that. So that's also of, of available to you. Other services we are able to offer, and we do have a table over here, um, you're welcome to take information which covers off on this in more detail, but there is a program we offer also called the Five Ways to um, Wellbeing. And that program is focused on mental health and wellbeing for carers. There are workshops run throughout the state and they're regularly promoted. And it's where carers can come together to hear about some really practical supports. They're fun and engaging, but also about um, some practical, cost-effective ways, in fact, they're free ways, to be able to top up our mental health, our toolkit up here. It's not only about physical um, exercise to keep our wellbeing going as carers, but it's also about our mental health and wellbeing. So those sessions are run regularly. And another one is called Your Caring Way. Your Caring Way is a service and support available to carers specifically who are looking to re-enter the workforce, or for the well, maybe not for the first time, but it could be for the first time, we know that carers are often may have a long time out of their um, working life and when they do want to re-enter the workforce, the confidence may be a bit low, they may not know where to start and we are able to offer a specialised service purely for carers who want to reconnect with the workforce or look at um, work, volunteering or education and we have employers from a whole range of sectors who are signed up to this where we're able to connect carers once they've gone through a bit of vocational coaching or support from us to then connect with potential employers which is really great. And we also play a lead advocacy role as I mentioned earlier. So where to from here? We wanted this, uh, this presentation to be able to set the scene about who is a carer. The other presentations are going to go into a bit more about vocational educational supports um, that you may be able to access um, as well. But this is really to give you an overarching um, view about who is a carer. Um, the number of carers that are, that are in our state as well as nationally and the significant role you play. Um, and for the carers in the room, I take my hat off to you because, you know, it is, it, is, it is a huge role and the caring role might look different for everybody, but we want to reassure you through today if you weren't aware of us or you weren't aware of how uh, the extent of our organisation or the Carer Gateway Service is available to you, that these are available to you if you choose to connect with us. So we encourage you to talk to your colleagues if you're here representing an organisation, friends, neighbours and others who may be a carer and promote um, the services that you may be able to access. And there's some ways you can access us. In order to access the services too, you do need to register with the exception of emergency respite. And there's forms on the table over here today. You're more than welcome to fill those out, post them in or you can register on our website. But I'll be available throughout the next couple of hours if you wanted to ask any questions or have a chat. Thank you very much. My role as a carer. So these hands tell a story um, of about a, an experience back in the 80s 
of being in a very stressful work environment for me. And it was uh, the night that I resigned from that workplace that um, arthritis came knocking on my door with a vengeance. So my life had been out of balance for that period of time. My caring role began in 2006 when my partner Jeff retired from work aware, aware that he was not able to remember things as he once did. My first retirement followed 12 months later. We enjoyed a couple of holidays and a, and a short while of uh, relaxation. There was ever changing and adjusting times as his illness slowly regressed. Dips and plateaus with dementia. Sometimes the dips were short, the plateau was long, or sometimes the dip was long and the plateau was short. It was always a time of juggling and readjusting and it's exhausting. And the role that I, as a carer, was not one that was in my life plan. So it took three attempts over six years uh, to get Jeff assessed, which happened in 2016. So this is 10 years after he first retired. The third time I went to get um, an assessment or to go to the doctor to get an assessment, the doctor had said to me, so you've come behind his back and expect me to cart him off to a nursing home. And I actually said I resent that because I'm the one living it and I'm the one experiencing it. And I had to do some name dropping to get credibility that I was actually real about my need for help. So that was uh, the beginning of help in the home. So the geriatrician assessment meant that Jeff immediately lost his license. And the help from home uh, was very useful to me because it allowed me to get back into the community because I actually needed mental stimulation. One of the things with dementia, if you're the carer, it's one of those things that is the first thing to go. There was nothing else wrong with Jeff except for his uh, dementia. So I missed that and those intellectual conversations. So how did I get that? I decided to volunteer because volunteering helped me take my mind off of the things that were happening at home. And it was able me to get back into the community and it enabled flexibility because it's not like paid work for me. If you're getting paid, you've got to turn up and you've got to do your best while you're in those working hours. And volunteering is about you turn up when you can, you contribute at the level that you can because your work is appreciated. And so my first volunteer role was with a community law firm. And then I moved on to Red Cross where I now continue to volunteer and also in paid work. So what sort of carer are you? Are you a carer with empathy? Are you a carer with patience? Are you a carer with no patience? Are you a creative carer? Are you a reluctant carer? Are you a carer wishing for an easier life? Do you judge yourself? Are you mindful of community and friends' expectations? The truth is, I was all of those things at different times. Over the years as a full-time carer, one of those, each one of those things came knocking on my door. And for me, it was about judgment my judgment of myself and my inabilities not to do and be perfect 100% of the time. And I do know I am a patient and caring support person now that Jeff is in full-time care. So my role changed from being a carer that once he went into full-time care, I am now his support person. And that enables me to turn up 100% of the time when I visit him to come with empathy, caring and understanding, all of those things which go out the door for me and my experience when I was in full-time care and had no support. So the in-house support was a challenge also because Jeff didn't want them there. And I'd be getting phone calls in my volunteer role and I had to treat it like a teenage person. Well, 
we're just going to have to tough it out because he's going to have to get used to it whether he likes it or not. So the thing that I've learned in my caring role is I had a life of dreams and desired accomplishments. And this caring role, which I did not foresee as part of my life's plan, required balance. A balance of giving to our loved ones or our chosen loved one, receiving, giving and receiving to ourselves as well as the person who we're caring for. And what I encourage you as carers is not to give so much of yourself to the detriment of your own health. And that for all of us is at different stages. We're all perfect how we are. We all give and care as much and as best we can in any given time. And during my caring time, I had other support issues with my son through the justice system and through his paraplegia. So there were other things happening for me other than my caring role. They were all demanding. But what I needed to demand of myself was to find that balance for me first and, as Helen rightly said, then that trickled down to me being a better carer. So I reach out to you today to say, let these hands be a reminder to you when you're doing your caring role to be mindful of where you are and your health and your time to have time to yourself. So be mindful, take care and support each other through your journey of caring. Thank you. Well, thank you, Cheryl, for sharing your story. That's beautiful. Um, it's just incredible the work that um, carers do that is unrecognised and um, um, undervalued because we don't really fully understand the extent of that until we've experienced it. And also, um, I think the work of volunteers that is so, um, so underestimated and so undervalued um, and, uh, you know, what you, uh, your, your um, presentation today was beautiful, so thank you. Boosting the Local Care Workforce Program, you might wonder why you know, we're talking about workforce um, at an event such as this, but when I met with Jerry and met with the Mayor following an introduction from Alan, we talked about the carer's needs outside and beyond just the caring role, and that there is opportunity for carers outside of that caring role to gain employment um, and um, you know um, contribute to the workforce um, and as Jerry uh, as uh, Cheryl said before it really gave her a lot of self-worth um, when she was in that role so I just want to talk to you today about some of those opportunities that are out there that might be worth considering um, for you as carers so in my program the um, boosting the local care workforce program a federally funded program through the Department of Social Services um, and it's around increasing the workforce in the care sector, both the NDIS, uh, Department of Veterans Affairs and in aged care. So um, I am the lead regional coordinator for this program for South Australia and my area as a coordinator is Adelaide Metro, York and Mid-North. Um, and I live actually in the Mid-North, in a little town called Minterra, I'm in the Clear Valley. And Julia Overton, um, she's here today at the back of the room. There you go. Uh, Julia's the regional coordinator for Port Pirie and above. So um, around through Port Augusta um, and Air and Western. So um, I just, I guess the, um, the reason we're here is that perhaps you might like to consider, you might never have considered the fact that um, there is opportunities for you working in the care workforce. You have all the attributes uh, to be able to work in that workforce and just um, giving you a little bit of an overview of um, the benefits of working in that sector. If you have a look at um, all the stuff that you would already know, um, it, it is meaningful work, it, it makes a huge impact. The thing about working in this sector is that it is flexible, you don't have to commit to full time, 
Um, it is a very flexible working environment with very, very diverse roles. Lots of opportunities to upskill and you already have many of the skills and attributes that are required. So if you were looking at doing any training in this sector, there's a thing we call recognition of prior learning. You've already got the learning because you're living it and this is, this is what you do every day. And we've run programs um, previously where um, carers have been recognised for their prior learning and with the assistance of registered training organisations, they've then gained the skills that they don't have and in a very short time frame, they've been able to gain their certificate in individual support and become part of the paid workforce. It's always interesting, it's never dull, um, and this, the entry level into these roles um, is uh, you know, quite, uh, quite easy. So when you're looking at um, the roles, so it's liaising with family members, carers, um, people in the health sector, um, and the tasks include all of the things that you would um, expect, um, and also include just social activities, social outings, um, and um, helping people uh, with disability to live um, fulfilling lives and achieve their goals um, and provide them with um, the supports that they need, whether that be the basic um, daily tasks of living or whether it is around supporting a person with a disability to also be a part of the workforce. So if you have a look at the entry level positions for the roles in this sector, in the aged care and disability sector, if you have a look at those entry level roles, they're, they're most diverse. You're looking at um, from cleaners to gardeners to providing social support to providing um, personal care, um, home care support, learning supports. So they're quite diverse at the entry level um, and then with the opportunity to uh, undertake training and um, there's uh, certainly a lot of opportunities. So what do you need to be um, working in this sector? Well, all I can say is you have all of them. You already have all of them as carers um, in, in your own right. Passionate, positive, enthusiastic, you're great advocates already, resilient, customer focused. You've always got the um, client, the person at the centre of all of the decisions that you make. Respectful and empathetic. So when you're looking at how do you enter the sector, um, the requirements initially are that you need a current police check, um, a job application and a working with vulnerable people clearance. So that's, that's the basic requirements and from there um, you look at what some of the positions will require. So you're looking at some qualifications perhaps, you're looking at some possible training, um, you're looking at that recognition for prior learning that I spoke to you about earlier. Maybe having a driver's licence, it may be necessary. Um, and so if you just have a look and see that it's really um, not a, an arduous thing to get into this sector um, and extremely, um, extremely rewarding. So just looking at some employer quotes, what they're looking for for people to work in the disability sector. So people who are interested in contributing to the community, they're looking for the right fit. So it's the right person, the right fit, and the right skills. Um, someone who can be a, a, a coach, a mentor, mentor, or just being a good friend. Teamwork, good communication skills. Some of our best support workers are people who have had previous careers in manufacturing and trades. Mums and dads returning to the workforce. We want staff who are compassionate, They've, who value older people and treat them with respect and dignity they reserve. You'll need to be reasonably fit. It's a flexible work environment. 
maybe working weekends will work for you, maybe overnights in a respite centre. So I always love the words of Dr Seuss and you never know when something might just might spark your thought pattern and sometimes you never know when one little bit of information might resonate with you and it may just shape what you might decide to do in the future. So the actions that you take today, the thought pattern that you have, that light bulb moment may just mould what you might like to think about doing in the future. Thank you. I'll talk about what Regional Development Australia, York and Mid-North have been doing in this space. I'll talk about some of the options that are available from Centrelink. These are basically straight off their website, so you may be aware of a carer's payment. When I'm talking about a carer's payment, I think of carer's pension, because essentially that's what it is. It's a pension that is paid at the same rate as an age pension and a disability pension, and sometimes people get a little bit unsure about that. But basically it's there to provide financial help to people who are unable to work and they are caring for someone with a severe disability or medical condition who is frail and aged. You can be on that carer's pension or payment and actually still work up to 25 hours per week, including travel time. Now a lot of people think, oh, I'm on the pension, I can't work. So you could be on a carer's pension and still be able to work up to 25 hours per week. And that's, fine. so I just mentioned that because of the fact that people sometimes have a bit of a misapprehension about that, but certainly now we'll move on to the carer's allowance. Now the carer's allowance can actually be paid on top of the carer's pension. It depends on the level of impairment of the person that is being cared for. Now it's an income supplement. Now it's currently $131.90 per fortnight that is payable to the carer and they're basically providing daily care for all of those criteria that we're talking about there. It's paid fortnightly. Now I don't know how many people are in the room are on over $250,000. I won't embarrass anyone by asking that but there's probably not that many in the room that are on over $250,000. And there's no assets test and the carer's allowance is not taxable. Now I can only speak from my own personal experience where we spoke to the RSL folk one day and advised them about the carer's allowance and a lot of the carers in the room said, oh my goodness, I would be eligible for that and had never considered it. So I'm just putting that out there at the moment that yes, if you provide 20 hours of care per week, there is an option that you can consider through Centrelink. That is that carer's allowance is a fortnightly payment. Now, the thing also to remember is that if you are working full time, for example, and you still provided three hours of care per day to your parents or your children or whatever the case might be, whatever the, where you've got a person who is frail, aged, has a, you know, a child with a disability, medical condition, it is something to, to consider. Uh, and I know there's a couple of ex Centrelink people in the room that would probably agree with me in saying that the best thing you can possibly do is to test your eligibility. And I'll go back to what I said previously is you don't know what you don't know. So the best way to see, am I gonna be eligible, entitled to a carer's allowance is please apply. Carer's supplement is also an annual lump sum payment. It helps with the cost of caring for a person and it, you get that carer's supplement if you're receiving a carer payment or carer allowance. So some of you may or may not be aware of that. And also there's a carer's adjustment payment, which is a one-off payment that helps family deal, families deal with the increased cost of caring for a child that is both seven years of age or younger and has had a sudden and severe illness or accident. Once again, there's also a thing called a child disability assistance payment. It's an annual lump sum payment. And once again, to help parents with the cost of caring for a child that has a disability. And last but not least on this slide is the pensioner education supplement. That's if you're on a disability support pension or a carer's pension where you can be paid to actually go and do some training. Um, so that's really one to consider if you're already on, whether it be a disability support pension, a carer's pension, 
Uh, so yeah, that's really, really one to consider. And a lot of people simply forget to apply for that. So we'll move on to the next slide. And that obviously to help carers with dependent children, family tax benefit, the parenting payment, which helps parents and guardians look after their children, the obvious childcare subsidy, which we would probably be well aware of, but also a double orphans pension is also there as, as well. Now we'll move quickly on to the next one. This is something that some people aren't aware of, obviously, is the Continence AIDS Payment Scheme and the Essential Medical Equipment Payment. And it obviously depends on the level of care and what your own particular circumstances are. If anyone wants any further information on these as far as where to be directed, I would simply get you to A, contact myself, uh, go online, look at that uh, website there, the, if you were to Google Services Australia, so if you, you were thinking about it and you got home and you thought, well, how do I access this? If you were to Google Services Australia, uh, we've also got the phone number, so you've got the call centre, you've got the website, the Services Australia, and you've got the office here in 53 Gertrude Street. So certainly I just, simply that's out to, to put it out there so that you can be aware of what is available. Uh, as I said, unfortunately, we couldn't have anyone from Centrelink here today for, for a number of reasons, but certainly I thought it was just really important for people to be aware of what is available to them from the Australian Government. Okay? Now, thanks, mate. Um, I'll just speak very, very briefly on Regional Development Australia and what our role in this is. Uh, Regional Development Australia, we're basically a competitively neutral organisation. We're out here just simply to try and help stimulate economic development and facilitate business opportunities. And essentially that's what it is, is that we know that there's an unmet need in the NDIS uh, that uh, Yvonne was talking about quite clearly and quite succinctly earlier on. She did a great job of explaining that and showed those unmet needs in the community. So we've had a, a program called Skills to Support in the last few years where we were able to place 99 people locally into jobs in the NDIS. So I'm really quite proud of that in the fact that we've been able to pay for what we call things called micro-credentials, which is your senior first age certificate, your certificate three in individual support, the DHS screening clearances for working for, with people with a disability or aged care or the NDIS. So we've been really, really proud of, of that record. Uh, that funding has now ceased and I've just acquitted the money yesterday, so that's, that's the end of that program and it's on to the next, which is called Use Care Connect. But certainly we've got different providers in the room and I can see TAFE and I can see MADEC regional training arm. Um, there's a whole crew of people in, the, in the, uh, the gathering today that I'd love to get into some dialogue with in uh, regards to what are the, some of the options there with regards to employment, education and training for carers as well. Um, but I think that's, that's about enough from me. I reckon what I might do is I'll pass over to Leanne Bennett's I'm the Community Project Manager for BAPT Care, who are the NDIS partners in the York Mid-North. So we're doing the NDIS planning appointments for um, people with, living with disability. We may have met some of you, um, and I know Emma's already been given some amazing feedback today. So Emma Neighbour that's sitting with me at the back there is one of our local area coordinators. And we have another one, Bobby Wardle, who is also a local area coordinator in the region. Um, I have been a carer for 23 years, so I know what a lot of you have been living um, and experiencing, and I take my hat off to you. I was involved with the Northern Carers Network because I lived down in Gawler, but I used to live at Paralawi. And don't be afraid to make noise to tell people what you need, because sometimes someone will listen and there are groups that can start to support you. So if you need a carer support group, then speak up and let's see what we can do in the region. I've been blessed, I used to um, be a remedial therapist before I worked for BAPT Care, and so I used to teach um, hand and foot reflexology to the carers down in that region so that they could look after themselves. And then we ran a bodywork session as well. And then that became part of their self-care workshops that they did every year. So um, I know what can come from grassroots and it's really, really important. So I take my hat off to you girls and to other people who are just starting their journey working with disability. 
Um, I know that it can, you can have dark nights of the soul and your role as a carer is incredibly um, challenging. Bapt Care are there to help you, so please, if you've got issues with NDIS um, or want to know about planning, want to know about how to use your services, please contact us. Emma looks after our walk-in centre at the RDA at 85 Ellen Street every fortnight on a Wednesday from 10 till 12. So um, people can just pop in there and see us and we can look, go through any issues that you might be having. So we can support you here in the region as well. Um, I also come up periodically from Gawler. I work in the John Perry School with the teachers there to help parents um, get their access to the NDIS. And I'll also go to doctor's appointments and stuff like that. So there's lots of support that we can give you as carers if you're struggling um, to get onto the scheme that we can um, support you with. So please don't think you're alone, you're not, all right? Please, if you're not getting carer allowance, do test your eligibility. Um, because I have been a carer, I'm a bit passionate about you all. Um, so I tend to um, make sure that my carers know about mental wellness plans. Who knows about a mental wellness plan? Okay. A mental wellness plan is something that everyone can access. And I highly recommend that maybe you have a chat to your doctors about um, getting a mental wellness plan. It is a plan that you can get that allows you some visits with a psychologist so that you can look after your mental health and your well-being as well. It is one of the best things that you can do for yourself. The other thing, there's another, um, on, and I'm quite happy to talk to you about it on the Bat Care stand afterwards. Um, there's a online program called mindspot.com and if you do the mini mental test that they do, just to, to clarify where you're sitting with your own mental health, um, they then get um, lots of sessions on phone counselling. And it's free, you don't need the um, mental wellness plan, you can just do that online. And they do some cognitive behavioural therapy with you, um, which is free of charge. Fantastic program, all right? So please look after yourselves because if you guys go down as carers, what happens to the person that you're caring about? If your doctor says you're strong, you can cope, grab him by the throat and say, I'm asking for help. All right? That happens all too often. Okay, so make sure that you show that you are vulnerable as well as resilient. Um, make some noise, talk to people, register for the Carer Gateway. It's important that you're registered, that you can access the amazing supports that they give you. We're here to help with NDIS and back care, and we're here to support you as well, all right? So go out there, be resilient, be strong, but also support each other, because that's really important too. All right, thank you. My name is Jodie and I'm the Social Support Coordinator for Baronga Village's new program, uh, which is called Centre-Based Respite in uh, the Mid-North area. So it extends from Port Pirie right through to Crystal Brook, Laura, um, right through to, to Wilmington. Um, and we are basically setting up a program um, which is going to be starting in the next few weeks uh, for, for carers of, of the elderly through uh, the My Aged Care system. So uh, wherever you live in the Mid-North, Barunga Village is committed to supporting you to live the best life possible. Um, ensuring that you feel part of a community is very important to us. Uh, we go out of our way to create uh, connections, engaging with the community and we build support networks around people all while having fun. So we genuinely care for your welfare. So are you caring for an older person and are they feeling isolated at home? Um, do you feel like that you need a break? Um, so we're here to support you with our new centre-based respite social support program and this could be for you. So again, we're based in the Mid-North uh, the program is placing a strong focus on activities 
that support independence and social connectedness. It's an opportunity for seniors to meet with other seniors in a comfortable, relaxed setting, um, encouraging positive relationships and connectivity. Um, it's free for eligible clients. And myself, along with a qualified community support worker, will run various weekly sessions. Um, the, the sessions will be tailored to the needs of the clients that, that attend. So we will tailor it around whatever interests um, the seniors have. Uh, so they could include taking the elderly to the movies, out for lunch, afternoon teas. Um, we could go fishing. So it, it all depends on what everyone is interested in. We will tailor the needs to those specific clients. Um, there's also transport services that can be arranged as well. So if you with uh, within a close proximity to the services, once it gets started, we can arrange a bus with, we do have wheelchair access as well. So the benefits from um, this program will be through the small group outings, uh, providing social experiences in a comfortable and relaxed setting. Um, and it enables you as carers to have a well-earned break. So we, we realise the process um, of eligibility for this um, program can be quite daunting and also sometimes if you have been um, aware that my aged care can sometimes be a little bit difficult to, to navigate. So I am available to help anybody through this, this system. Um, I can help you access the services and um, help you care for your, your loved one in the best way possible. So my details are up on the screen here. Um, if you're interested in accessing this service, you could um, come and see me after the, uh, the session and um, I'll help you as much as you can. Fantastic. That's brilliant. And thank you. No, well done, Jody. No, that's um, wonderful. Thank you. Um, and I think we'll leave your details up there, Jody, if that's all right. Yes, so if anyone's fine. got any queries, thank they can you. jot those down to, to register interest, et cetera. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. We're blessed to have such wonderful presenters here today. And the second cohort I really, really want to thank today is the carers in the room. We all know that we do such an absolutely outstanding job. And I think we all owe you a debt of gratitude and thank you so much for the work you do.